But nobody knows when the day and the hour will come. Not the heavenly angels, not the Son. Only the Father knows. So I want to pause there for one second because that, that is something that is so easily overmissed. You have the Trinity, which is a whole other discussion. But the fact that the Son comes down, but yet God only knows the time of the day is amazing to me. As it was in the time of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the human one. In those days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. And so the day of Noah entered the ark. They didn't know what was happening until the flood came and swept them all away. The coming of the human one will be like that. At that time, there will be two men in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, stay alert. You don't know what day the Lord is coming, but you understand that if the head of the house knew at what time the thief would come, he would keep alert and wouldn't allow the thief to break into his house. Therefore, you also should be prepared because the human one will come at a time you don't know. So it's about preparation. And the, the interesting part that I found when I was researching for the, the sermon here, Harper's Bible Dictionary, there was two different definitions for hope in, the, in that book. The Hebrew Bible, hope is a verb, to wait or to expect. In the New Testament, hope takes on a more secular meaning. The expectation that something good is going to happen. Favorable future under God's direction. So you can see the difference between the two. And I believe it's because with the Hebrew Bible, the waiting and expecting was Jesus' birth. In the New Testament, with Christ here for us, hope takes on a different meaning. The hope of something good. The hope of being with God. The hope of, of knowing your Savior the best that you can. And knowing that He will be there with you. Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been made righteous through his faithfulness, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into his grace in which we stand through him, and we boast in hope of God's glory. But not only that, we even take pride in our problems, because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. This hope doesn't put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So you can, you can hear in the scripture of Romans about how our troubles, no matter what they are, can give us hope because we grow closer to God during those times. So I'm going to read a few scriptures about hope. What does the Bible say about hope? First Peter, therefore, once you have your minds ready for action and you are thinking clearly, place your hope completely on the grace that will be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. First Thessalonians, this is because we remember your work that comes from faith your effort that comes from love, and your perseverance that comes from hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father. So, so far you've heard how our hope is through Christ. Colossians, God wanted to make the glorious riches of the secret plan known to among many Gentiles, which is Christ giving you the hope of glory. Glory of Him coming back and us being ready for it. 
Philippians 4. My God will meet you every meet your every need out of his riches in the glory that is found again in Christ Jesus. So Christ is our hope. And we can look at hope many different ways. But what I want to talk about today is what is your hope? And is God part of it? See, sometimes we hope something happens. I hope I win the lottery. Never bought a ticket. You know, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about, yes, we can have hope, but we have part of that hope. We need Christ in that hope. And sometimes when we hope for things, it doesn't work out the way that we want it to. But if we hope through Christ, no matter how it works out, He is with us. That is what our hope is. So I want to I want to share a video, and if you're not a baseball fan, I apologize, but you'll get the understanding from the video. If you if you've seen Moneyball with Brad Pitt. It's about Billy Bean, who is the general manager of the Oakland A's back in the 90s, 2000s. The Oakland A's is a lower market team where they don't have a whole lot of money to spend. So they have to get creative with how they recruit players. So this scene that I'm going to play is about a baseball a player called, his name is Scott Haddenberg. He was a catcher, and he blew his elbow out. And if you don't know anything about baseball catching, you have to be able to throw, and you have to throw hard because you have to be able to throw from home to second. So when he tears his, his elbow up, he can no longer do that. So he is thinking to himself, I will never be a catcher again. I hope that I can play in the major leagues. I hope the team will call. So Billy Bean and his scout goes to Scott Edinburgh and they talk to him. And Billy Bean has this, this way of looking and thinking outside the box. The way that he approaches things is different than the other general managers. Because see, he can't afford to say, well, I'm going to go out and I'm going to throw 50 million at this player. He has to go, what can I do to make things happen with the money that I have? So the video is a conversation that they have when they come to Scott and Hattingberg's house.
involved in the open ends. Copy has been sent over to your agent. Discuss with what? Let us know. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, ah. So here, here's my point with that video, and you might not get it until I tell you why I wanted to play that video for you. Sometimes we hope for this. Scott Hattiebird hoped to get a call to play for a team as a catcher. He always had hope to play him, but his philosophy needed to change. He had to go from saying, and did you know this because this kind of, I didn't catch until this time, what did he say? I'm a catcher. You have to think differently if you're hoping for something. You have to have an open mind about what you're hoping for. You have to know that there's different ways to get where you're hoping to be. You have to be able to adapt. And I think my biggest thing when I talk about hope today, we all can have hope. Christ is our hope. But whatever our hopes are, number one, is God a part of it? Number two, are we open to going in the direction that God wants us to go in? Because it's still, it's the same hope. But are we just a catcher? Or could we look at things differently and become what we need to be to reach that goal and hope of Christ? We talk about this all the time. Before COVID, we talked about how things were different. During COVID, we talked about how things are different. Now we talk about how things are different. And we all have hope. And we all have the hope that Christ is walking with us down that path. And we know he is. But when we get to that point where we reach a fork in the road and God says, we want, I want you to go here, are we going to say, I'm a catcher? That's not, no. I, I want him to keep going here. The hope is still there. Christ is still with us. But are we open-minded enough to know when we hit that fork in the road which way that God wants us to go? If, if he, Scott, would have been close-minded enough to say, I don't want to be, I don't want to attempt first base, I don't want to think about being different than what I am, he might not have ever played baseball again because he wasn't open to that change. But he still had hope. And he knew that this road wasn't where he needed to go anymore, that it was down this road. <clears throat> and if you caught it at the very end, I think it hit him. Because if you watch his embrace with the wife and his daughter, he knew and through his hope, plans have changed, and his hopes were answered. Today we talk about hope. My hope for us as a church is to go through this Christmas.
fruits of the Spirit and come out on the back end of it being more excited about Christ coming down here and born for us than we've ever been. Being so excited to know that Christ came for us to carry our sins. That Christ is our hope. That on January 1st, when we hit the end of Advent, that we are ready to approach the new year with a new frame of mind. And not to say 